Okay, so the space shuttle went up this morning, <clears throat> and that reminded me of another story, only this is not Broadway. Um, in 1983, the first American woman went up in space. Her name was Sally Ride. And I have to put my glasses on for this one. Uh, we had the unique opportunity of going to watch it at um, NASA as VIPs. Let me explain this to you. And it was fun. Um, at the time, in 1983, my husband was the director of aviation operations for the city of New York. Now, um, NASA went ahead and invited us, plus other very important people, I'm sure, to watch the launch. And of course, I was very excited. And I'm going to make this quick because there's a lot to get in. Um, so what they went ahead and did was they invited us as, as VIPs, and of course, we didn't pay for anything. We took off at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. Now, I thought we were going to fly in a regular plane. Now, understand, I'm not a great flyer anyway, even then. So we go to Teterboro Airport, and all of a sudden, I see a C-130 pulling up at the gate. And he says, the guy says, oh, there's your plane. And I said, oh, in that? It had four propellers and, you know, what a C-130 looks like. And for all of you women out there who doesn't, I'm going to explain this. Okay, so being that there were 30 people there, some of them, the men that were there were in, um, were in uniform, uh, we went. I knew nobody. We walk into this plane and it's cavernous. And anyone who did not, or whoever does not know what a C-130 is, those are the planes you see now that takes cargo to Iraq and anywhere actually in the world and you can fit um, trucks in there. It's huge. It's not as big as a 747. However, because there is no cargo space on the bottom of a plane where you normally sit anyway, you're walking into the very bottom of the plane, which makes it look cavernous. So you walk in and all you see is literally um, like, like uh, I guess just the ribs of the plane and it's all painted green and it's really weird and very, very imposing looking. And there's, up front there was two or three rows of seats just for us and we go and we take off. Now this plane flight was gonna last longer than a jet. It took five hours. Um, in the middle of this whole thing, I'm looking around and I'm saying, what in the world is this? And I was very interested. And then about two hours into the flight, I realized I had to go to the bathroom. Well, you can't go to the bathroom on a C-130 because there is no bathrooms. And I whispered into my husband's ears, I need to go to the bathroom. And now, understand there were other women on this plane too. He goes over and he talks to one of the, I don't know, pilots or, or people who are helping to do something with the plane. I, I don't know anything about this. And says, listen, my wife has to go to the bathroom. They literally took one of those 50-gallon drums and placed a toilet seat above it. This is back towards the back of the plane. And then strung a plastic sh sheeting around it so that I could go to the bathroom. I had to go so badly. I was hoping to make it to Florida. It didn't work. Anyway, I go. And I said, oh, the hell with it. I have to go. As long as my husband was standing right there. And, you know, I, I knew I'd be okay. Right in the middle of the middle of the plane. No room. No nothing. No walls. No nothing. As I come out of the bathroom, I see a long line of the women who also had to go to the bathroom but didn't want to say. Okay. We get to Florida. It was the day before the actual flight. Um, uh, it was quite wonderful. I have to tell you guys, Florida, we had not moved to Florida yet, is as flat as a pancake from, I would say, three quarters of the way or a quarter of the way down to south um, of the state. Now, we went the next morning. We got up very, very early. The plane, uh, the... the um, shuttle was supposed to take off, I think it's 7 a.m., something like that. And we were, you know, taken over by bus. It was called STS-7. I think it was the seventh um, 
space flight on in the shuttle, um, and it was the Challenger. And yes, it's the Challenger who that blew up years ago, years later. And they bring us to the closest place you can be to watch the shuttle, which is literally one mile away. But because the ground is so flat, you could see the shuttle way, way, way back there, standing. It looked like a little toothpick. The other people who were really working in NASA had a better view. They were closer. But we were the first other people to be placed closer. I have to tell you something. You've all seen the shuttle, shuttle go up. I have pictures. I can show you pictures, but it would look exactly like it does when you see it on TV. Well, the shuttle goes up, and here's what happens. Um, the whole ground, besides, besides the, um, the, the flame coming from the back of the shuttle, which happened to have been brighter than the sun, the sound was so deafening that the ground shook. Now, we were one mile away. And uh, you could feel it all the way up your body, just complete shaking. Uh, it was an experience I will never forget for the rest of my life, just to be there, to see it in person, and then to feel what I didn't expect to feel. And yes, we watched the whole thing go up, and we watched the boosters come off, and it was really wonderful. Because the shuttle went off this morning, I guess I had rem I forgot about the story and I wanted to tell you about it. Let me tell you something. If you ever get a chance to go and see a shuttle go up, it's definitely an experience. It's much more than what you see on TV. And um, you can feel it in your body. Everything shakes. It was probably one of the most exciting um, things I've ever done. And of course, the next day we flew back on the plane on their same C-130. And this time they were ready for me with the bathroom. But anyway, that's really the story. I wanted to let you know. Uh, it kind of brought me back to those years and it was a lot of fun. Take care, guys. Bye.